highest quality acrylics generally have real paint swatches on the tube. Notice the black stripes behind the paint. It tells you the transparency and opacity. If you can see through to the dots, the color is transparent. If you can't see through it, consider it opaque. For staff training and to share with customers, we make charts for this store. Nickel Azo Yellow is one of the most transparent colors. In its mass tone, it looks way darker than Yellow Ochre below it. But the undertone, when you thin it out, is so bright and clean, it looks like a bright yellow. By contrast, semi-opaque or opaque colors do not have a vibrant undertone. Nickel Azo Yellow is one of the few colors that temperature shifts from warm to cool. But here we're talking about its transparency. Yellow ochre is opaque. When we thin it out, we still see the same color, just a little bit lighter in tone. It gets lighter, not brighter. Chrome oxide green is one of the most opaque colors. And again, when we try to thin it, we still see the same color, lighter, and in fact, a bit duller. Thalo turquoise is only semi-opaque, and its undertone remains predictably lighter. Colors that are considered semi-transparent, I think, are the bossiest, strongest colors in your palette. Mass tone is the thick, undiluted color. Their mass tone is so rich with color, it looks black. And when you thin it out, you can thin it out for a really, really, really long time before you get to a light, bright color. The undertone is what the color looks like once it's been diluted. And with semi-transparent and transparent colors, the undertone seems to glow. The whiteness of the paper really helps amplify the intensity of the color. Next, we'll add white, titanium white, to each color. And again, you will see that the transparent and semi-transparent colors remain intense. See why I call them bossy? You can contaminate a lot of white quickly. Noticing I'm using the three cup rule for my water. Dirtiest, dirty, and clean. I dispense only a little water at a time and I change it out quickly. Therefore, I always have fresh water for these color theory experiments. Where the semi-opaque and opaque colors tend to dull out, the titanium white really knocks down their intensity and makes them a duller color. Instead of making the color brighter, it's actually making the color more pastel-y, more muted. So you can predict what will happen, the difference between yellow ochre mixing with white and nickel azo yellow mixing with white. Opaque colors make a duller color, transparent colors make brighter colors. However, most of us know the frustration of trying to take a transparent color and paint it over top of a dark color. You can't even see it. It has no covering ability. It's transparent. But a transparent color over a grisaille or over a colored underpainting can manipulate colors quickly and save you a lot of mixing time. Keep watching, I do demonstrate making a painting with transparent and opaque colors. So yellow ochre that I called dull, because of its covering power, it looks bright on a dark background. This is one of the many reasons artists will tone or paint a color on the background before starting to paint. The underpainting or underneath color will either provide a contrast for the opaque colors or it will glow through the transparent colors. So opacity is the ability of one color to cover over another color, which is important to know if you're making corrections. Thinning a color till it's transparent and placing it over top of other colors in a thin application is called glazing. And you can glaze colors over compositions and tonal renderings and really create magic. In fact, this is a clever way to do color theory. Watch what happens when these two blues glaze over top of yellow and red. So in the middle stripe, you can see their undertone, but the upper area you see green. In the lower area, of course, blackish. The two bright colors cancel each other out and you get a dark. I tried to go back and dilute chrome oxide green, but it was uncooperative. Yellow ochre, equally uneventful. 
But turquoise, thalo, hello. Predictable results for color theory. With a quick wash of diluted transparent color, we see green, we see blue, we see black. Dioxazine violet is a high tinting strength color, which means a little bit goes a long way. It is certainly strong enough to cover the red ochre, but I'm trying to use it thin so you can see its beauty in that it lets the red ochre glow through. You see the red and you see the purple. It's very interesting, especially on a textured surface where the glaze can sink into the hollows. Um, I love dioxazine purple for that. Yellow is the complementary color to purple. So when we glaze the purple over the yellow, we're going to subdue it. And we're going to get some of the nicest shades of ochres and burnt umbers. Purple over red changes the temperature from a bluey purple to a warm reddish purple. Here's a close-up recap of undertone and mass tone and tinting strength for brightness and dull colors. And here's a recap of opaque covering colors and transparent glazing colors and the underpainting glowing through. It is the pigment that decides if a color is opaque or transparent. On the label, you'll see the square that says it's opaque. Chromoxide green, very big particles. Thalo green, very small particles. The blank square on the label shows that it's a transparent color. Here's a look at thalo green under the magnifying glass. Very fine particles. This is synthesized from carbon. Chromoxide green, by contrast, is just dug out of the earth. It is pulverized, but the particle size is big, almost boulders compared to the teeny tiny thalo. The large particle sizes of the opaque colors also make them matte. Where the small particles allow a lot of light and medium to glow, they tend to be glossier. Here we're slipping in a white background and you can see that the transparent colors glow in the mixed color even, where when we take the white away and put it on a dark background, it is the opaque colors time to glow. So how will you use this to best effect in your next painting? I've made a lot of charts in my time, so here's another one. On the left, we have colors made pastel by adding white. And on the right, we have translucent colors with the white of the paper going through. Okay, enough about charts. Let's put this into action. So let's say I did a detailed underpainting. I could glaze over the whole piece with a transparent color. Or I could block out to simplify the background by using an opaque color. As promised, I'm going to make side-by-side -side paintings using both transparent and opaque colors in both transparent and opaque styles. Here we go! Quinacridone magenta is a high-tinting, clean color in its undertones. And I think it's perfect for representing this little gummy bear. He does look translucent and squishy, doesn't he? One way to make a transparent color opaque is to add titanium white. But now I can't rely on the white of the paper. I must paint in all the tints and highlights myself. Opaque colors can be made transparent by adding water or mediums. Cobalt turquoise is an opaque color, which we can dilute to make it transparent, but it's not as glowing. And with opaque colors, you don't have the white of the paper helping you. You have to paint all the highlights. And you can see I did a lot of back and forth and back and forth. Acrylics dry darker, so I'm always adjusting and going back in and adding more white. Now we're going to make an orange and green gummy bear using transparent and opaque colors. Don't blink, because with Nicolazo yellow, swoosh, swoosh, and done. All my underpainting was saved and I could just glaze over the top and suddenly pink and yellow made orange. When I do it with opaque colors, you can see I have to go back and forth and back and forth and I have to mix my own oranges. Quite a bit longer painting process. Yellow ochre is opaque. Look how quickly I can paint in the background and clean up my edges, painting the background and making my shape at the same time. And then if I dilute it enough, I can glaze over top, not as glowing as the transparent colors above it. 
And when I use my two opaque colors in white, I must mix every color. It takes a bit longer. One is not better than the other, and one might appeal to you more than the other. So do what works for you. Do the style that works for you. Look for information on color charts. Here we have a transparent square, a semi-transparent, semi-opaque, and opaque. Many products have them right on the label. Here's a transparent square right up by the star rating for light fastness. Companies also put a lot of information right on their labels. So just turn the tube over to see the opacity transparency rating. Golden allows for more nuances. They have their transparency and opacity on a scale. You can also buy products that are naturally transparent. Alcohol inks, watercolors, liquid watercolors, Copic markers, watercolor brush markers. If you love opacity, choose Posca paint markers, Masterclass tempera paints. Gouache comes in regular gouache and acrylic gouache. You can get matte acrylics. Um, wait a minute, gouache, tempera, matte acrylics. Oh, what's the difference? Stay tuned, like, follow, and subscribe because that's our next video.